historically, Mandela's links with Algeria will become extremely important uh, to understanding uh, his legacy. I think Mandela, like Algeria, uh, played hugely important parts uh, in the post-colonial era. And it seems to me that Algeria played a crucial role in actually forging Nelson Mandela as a, as a successful uh, revolutionary. And this is a very little known but uh, very important chapter in Nelson Mandela's life. Uh, in 1961, uh, when the uh, ANC, the African National Congress, engaged in the uh, resistance movements to fight uh, the apartheid regime in South Africa, it was then that the movement got closer to another revolutionary movement involving Algerian re- rebel fighters fighting colonial France. And uh, in 1961, Mandela visited fighters from the Algerian revolutionary movement uh, in exile uh, in Morocco. And he particularly met uh, Dr. Mustafa Shauki, who was a member, one of the leaders of the provisional government of the Algerian uh, Republic, which was effectively the Algerian government in exile. And the two of them had very long discussions about the convergence of their two revolutionary movements, the one led by the INC in South Africa and the one led by the National Liberation Front against the the French uh, in Algeria and in other parts of the world. And for Mandela, the symmetry uh, between the two movements was absolutely obvious. And it was during that same visit that Mandela first received military training from the armed branch of the Algerian National Liberation Front, which was involved in in the struggle against the French. So he saw a symmetry there, but I guess um, in terms of Algeria's fight for independence, some would say it was throwing off the shackles of colonialism, whereas for Nelson Mandela, it was slightly different in that there was a racial aspect to that. Do you can can you see the difference there? Is that significant? Well, I think in both cases, what the the common point was is to get rid of of, of oppression. In fact, uh, Algerians were very much treated uh, by their colonial masters at the time uh, like second-class citizens, or or even worse, they were not uh, French citizens, uh, of course, and that was also what motivated uh, their struggles to, uh, you know, gain uh, uh, rights uh, as uh, as individuals and as citizens and become an independent uh, nation. And that's precisely why that the Algerian Liberation Front leaders not only trained Mandela and ASC members militarily, but they also supported them financially in their fight against the apartheid. And in 1962, Mandela was invited in Algiers uh, uh, by the then uh, uh, fir- uh, president, the, fir- the, the first president of Al- independent Algeria, Ahmed Ben Bella, who invited him to a military parade with all the uh, leading figures of the Algerian uh, revolutionary movements. And he offered Mandela and his um, the ANC um, members uh, financial support and indeed um, Mm. military training in military camps and a lot of ANC members even after uh, Mandela's imprisonment continued to receive training in at the uh, most prestigious uh, military academy in Algeria in Cherchel and and this training was taking place uh, seriously. When when Mandela was in prison did Algeria take up the cudgels on his behalf and lobby the international community given his links with Algeria. Um, They wanted to see, presumably, Mandela freed. What kind of role did they play in that, do you think? Well, they uh, they played a a role politically uh, as well in the 1960s. In 1965, Algeria opened ANC offices uh, in in Algeria, in its capital cities, from which leading figures of the ANC, such as Robert uh, Reicher and Johnny Makatini, who were responsible for uh, external communications for the ANC movement, were able to file anti-apartheid reports and communiques to to the rest of the world. And even the current uh, South African President Jacob Zuma, who was, of course, fighting the same cause as Nelson Mandela, he regularly visited Algeria in the 70s and 80s to get get support. Uh, And he was even granted an Algerian passport to facilitate uh, his movements. Uh, diplomatically, uh, Algeria also played a, a role in highlighting uh, the struggle of um, those suffering uh, the apartheid regime. Uh, in 1974, uh, the Algerian Foreign Affairs Minister, Abdelaziz Bouteflika, now Algeria's president, who was also president of the U- United Nations General Assembly, he uh, was um, responsible for ruling out 
apartheid South Africa from the United Nations 29th session. And it was such a blow uh, for South Africa that it didn't take its seat at the UN right up until 1991 when the apartheid regime came to an end. 50 years on from Algeria's independence from France, it's still a very turbulent country as we know and the overthrow of uh, a democratically elected government in the 1990s followed by civil war and uh, Islamists coming to power. Do you think Algeria can take lessons or at least uphold the values of Nelson Mandela today as it seeks a more peaceful future? Well, yes, absolutely. And and I think that's uh, indeed what uh, um, President Bouteflika has tried to put in place when he came to power in 1999. Uh, At the end, uh, effectively, of the uh, decade-long civil war, he embarked on a process of of reconciliation, uh, uh, much like uh, what Mandela was trying to achieve to reconcile, you know, uh, different uh, people in his own country. And and so amnesties were issued in Algeria to um, try to... uh, perhaps heal the nations from the you know the terrorist attacks it had been a victim of and and try to form a nation again and as we are seeing in the context of the Arab Spring more recently uh, what we are very much witnessing is that because of its very bloody history Algerians are uh, much keener to uh, embark uh, on a, a perhaps slower and pragmatic political reform rather than uh, a violent uh, path towards uh, reform, really.